Hi, I want to start with something that we've seen before, perhaps in younger grades, dealing with the particle nature of matter. First of all, what do we classify matter as? Matter is anything that has both mass and volume. Matter is composed of particles, and these particles are moving in a variety of ways. And the particles can take on a variety of different natures. They could be individual atoms or groups of atoms that we call molecules. They could possess charges, in which case we call them ions. Matter is further broken down into two categories, pure substances and mixtures. In the case of pure substances, it's matter that has a constant composition that never changes. And it has very distinct chemical and physical properties, such as melting points and boiling points. Mixtures, on the other hand, contain two or more pure substances. And these contain have a variety of properties, usually made by adding together the properties of the substances that make them up. They can be separated too by simple means such as distillation, filtration, or chromatography. If you return back to pure substances, they can be further broken down into elements and compounds. Elements essentially contain only one type of atom, whereas compounds contain a fixed ratio of different types of atoms. Moving on to mixtures, we can have homogeneous mixtures. We call these solutions. They have uniform properties throughout the sample, meaning a sample from the top and the bottom would possess the same properties. A heterogeneous mixture doesn't share this. It would have non-uniform properties that could vary from top to bottom or left to right within the sample itself. To see that we understand these terms, let's take a look at a group of substances and see how you might classify them. Starting off with seawater. Seawater is a mixture of salts and water, hence it's a mixture and it is relatively uniform throughout, hence we would put it in the solution category. Oxygen gas, O2, essentially is made of only one type of atom, so it would be a pure substance and an element. A sample of copper is made of only individual copper atoms all joined together in a lattice. Table salt, sodium chloride, a mixture of two atoms. Water, H2O a fixed ratio. And finally, bronze, a mixture of two metals, copper and usually zinc together to form bronze. So this is how we can classify matter. Let's take a little bit more careful look at pure substances. Let's look at the melting of a pure substance. In this case, I'm going to consider water. We begin with a solid. Solids have both fixed volumes and fixed shapes. This is due to the lattice or the network in which they're arranged. And the particles essentially possess a vibrational motion back and forth. When we turn these into a liquid, we now have something that has a fixed volume, but its shape can change. And the particles tend to possess a rotational motion, but they can also vibrate and they can also move slightly from spot to spot. We call that translational motion. And finally, in the gas phase, we have something that has neither fixed volume nor fixed shape, something that takes up the size of its container and the particles can vibrate, rotate, as well as translate. And we use translate meaning from point to point. We have names for these changes of state. The addition of heat would take a solid into a liquid and we would call that melting. Further addition of heat, we would call vaporization as we turn the liquid into a gas. It's also possible under certain conditions to go directly from the solid to the gas. and We call that change of state, sublimation. We can go in the reverse direction through the removal of heat. So taking our liquid and removing heat from it, it will essentially form again into the lattice. We call that freezing or condensation when we move from the gas to the liquid phase. Similarly, we can move from gas directly to a solid as in the formation of frost, and that's called deposition. Let's look a little bit more closely at how temperature and the changes of state take place. Let's begin with a sample of ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Within that sample of ice, we would have particles that are vibrating. Here I'm showing a graph of the number of particles and the amount of movement energy or kinetic energy they might have. So you might have some vibrating slowly, they would appear on the far left, and some that are vibrating a little bit faster, they would appear further on the right. And so we have a distribution of speeds or vibrations within our substance, and hence, a distribution of kinetic energies. All the particles don't have but one kinetic energy. There's a wide distribution, 
like there might be marks in, say, a class. And somewhere there would be a representative average kinetic energy. Temperature is a measure of that average kinetic energy. If I add heat to my sample, I change the distribution of particles. And as a result, I also change the location of the average energy, in this case, moving up. So as my ice moves from minus 10 to zero degrees Celsius, I'll see an increase in their kinetic energy, and as a result, an increase in their temperature. Once I reach zero degrees Celsius, the temperature in Ophod further rises at this point. What I have to do is break the bonds in the ice itself to form a liquid. Breaking down the lattice absorbs energy, but it doesn't result in any increase in motion of the particles. And as a result, there's no change in their kinetic energy and it levels off as you can see in plateau at point B. Once I've melted the substance, then they can proceed to vibrate and rotate more quickly. And now I lead to a further increase in temperature until I get to 100 degrees Celsius. At that point, again, I need to break the bonds that exist between the particles in the liquid. There's no further increase in kinetic energy during this stage, but there is the breaking of the bonds within the liquid. And that then results again in another plateau that occurs at 100. Once I've turned all of my sample into a gas, now I can increase their translational motion by the addition of more heat, and hence their kinetic energy increases further, as shown here in start D. So that's a quick review of some of the particle nature of matter. In our next program, we'll quickly do some review of chemical equations and types of chemical equations. Thanks for watching.